go a little bit of minor blues there for you guys hello everyone I'll say everyone i don't know it, certainly not everyone is watching that would be quite helpful if everybody in the whole world was watching this they would surely have better things to do i think at the moment well hello everyone i've already been through that um let's just check and make sure that i'm actually on the air hi nick Hi, the kitchers. <laughs> is that is that technically correct? I don't know. I know that you're watching anyway, so I hope you're enjoying it. Um, Maricela, Mar 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 I, I think that's how you pronounce it. But thank you. Yeah, great way to start the day. It's um it's three o'clock in the UK, but um to be fair, you know, I would like to start the day at this point. It'd be great. Um, hi, Sheila. Hello, Richard. How's it going? Sounds great, but it's not. It's just not you. That's fair enough. Um. Hi, Russ. Thanks. Glad you like it. Hey, hi, Jack. Hello, my dear. Hi, Mum. Hi, Bon. Hi, James. A Gibbo. You, I love my fandy. Yeah, exactly. I think it should be another sort of like vaguely sort of like monkey sort of name because it's almost given. Um, thank you, Jack. I'm glad to send a good. Hi, Danny. How's life over in Moscow? Um, hi, Sonia. Um, thanks, Russ. I'm glad you're liking the sounds. Right, good. Well, I think we've established that it's some. Um, that I'm plugged in and everyone can hear me at some point. Um, right, so it's episode, oh God, what would I call this one? Episode 17, I think. So part 17. Let me count them up. I think it's right. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yes. Oliver Malley, hiya. Oliver, um, blimey, it's been a while since I've seen you. I think we've met up, it, it got to be france years and years ago that was great i remember we had a had a great gig so this is um 
I should introduce the episode 17. This is uh, my, well, I say it's my Firebird. It technically it is my Firebird, but this was um, actually bought for my son, Jaden. He was actually, a, I can hear him upstairs now, pounding the drum kit. Um, he plays drums now and doesn't play a great deal of um, a great deal of guitar these days. So um, he was going to sell this one. So I decided that I couldn't um, I couldn't see this one go. Um, so you know, I decided that I would give him a bit of cash for this particular guitar. Um, he I think he sold a couple of them. He sold like a Squire Strat, but I think this is too nice. The story behind this one is that this was um, this was his first electric guitar, pretty much. This uh, we walked into um, Cash Converse. In Norwich, uh, me and um, me and Jay, my son, and we, uh, my good friend of mine, Barney, Barnaby Rose, works or worked in there at the time, um, in the music department. And um, oh yeah, hi Steve, diatonic dude. Yes, I, that's a, a common autocorrect. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, where else you can look for? I would look for a, a firebird. Anyway, so this is um, we walked in and we saw th the first thing he saw was this guitar. And he decided that this was the one, and he didn't even try it, try it out before he decided that he had to have it. Um, there was a ton of guitars in there that he could have chosen from, um, but Jay, being Jay, he chose this beast, which was quite large for him at the time because he was quite young, and um, it was also the more expensive of the of the options, which is again very much Jay. Um, but basically, this is a um, what's called, and I'll hold it there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's called a gibbo which I think is a little bit on the cheeky side. Um, I don't know a great deal about these guitars. Um, they were around um, for a little while. I haven't seen very, very many of them. Um, and uh, or clearly a Gibson Firebird copy, but I believe that they're made in the Tokai factory. So this is technically, a, uh, I think, possibly a cheaper version of a Tokai copy. Um, so I'm pretty sure that there's a connection there somewhere. So it's basically a, a Gibbo, but very likely sort of supposedly rebadged um, from being a Tokai Firebird. But um, someone, I'm sure, clever, will be able to join in and um, tell me whether that's true or not. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really want to get rid of it, so I gave him some cash for it when he decided he didn't, um, wasn't keen on sticking to guitar. Um, the nice thing about that is that um, apparently... Uh, Tim, change the tuners and you'll be on to a winner. Tuners aren't aren't really that bad. I mean, they they I mean they probably um they probably could be better, but they seem um they seem okay. You know, it's not gone out of tune. But yeah, I know what you mean. Probably a decent set of tuners. Maybe pearl tuners won't look pretty cool. Um, the um so the upshot of this is that I believe, as I understand, that these are actually hard to find. Um, I've seen a couple of them on eBay for around four hundred pounds, which is way more than we paid for it. Um, because obviously I think it's quite difficult to find um, Firebird copies. Um, so this is one of those ones that uh, is difficult to, probably difficult to get hold of a Firebird copy that of this quality. It's pretty damn good. Danny, well, life in Moscow is not much better than anywhere else now. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the live streams and make things more, it makes things more interesting for me too. So I will persist. <laughs> So it's a, I mean, for what it is, which is a relatively cheap Gibson copy, it's actually a really nice guitar to play. It's a um, it's a sort of glued on neck, so it's made like pretty much like the um. Gibson so it's not a cheapish bolt on. Um, uh, single pickup. I don't tend to be a big fan of single pickup guitars. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, a fat barking tone. I would, I would say that's uh, quite aptly put. I don't know what it is, but but single pickup guitars. I don't use them very much because I like to have the option of a front pickup. But all the back, uh, all the single pickup guitars that I've played seem to have a nice singing back pickup tone because they. I suppose it's the magnetic pull of the front pickup might change the sound a little bit. People tend to think that. 
that it does change the sound. But for a mini humbucker, it actually sounds quite fat. I mean, I've got the tone rolled off quite a lot. Um, I've got it like, oh, what is that? It's about, th I've got it back to about three on the tone control. And I've got at the moment um, a Seymour Duncan 805. Um, but also um, the King of Blues pedal on engine B. So if I turn it off, give you a clean sound with the tone full up. This is the... Let's turn that up a little. It's got quite a nice clean tone to it. But again, quite limited because it's just back pickup. So it's uh, not bad, very clean sound, but I think they excel when they've got a little bit of dirt on them. So this is the um, back pickup, um, obviously. Um, tone full up and uh, engine B on the, on the uh, King of Blues. Um, this is the um, the eight oh five that Simon Duncan. <laughs> And that's um, so that was the tone I was using earlier with the um, King Blues on as well. And there's the 805, and there's the um, the other pedal on the same time. I do like stacking overdrive pedals. They sound pretty cool together. Um, right, let's play a song. Uh, what should we have? Let's have a little bit of um. Let's still have a backing track, some uh, boogie. <laughs> Thank you. 
plays the back pickup uh, pretty closely to be fair so this will be a short one because there's not much more to say about this one haven't used it a great deal this was just something i really didn't want to let go of when um when jay decided he'd be get rid of it um because i have nothing that's weird like this like a all sort of these um, guitars are being a really weird looking thing that's sort of you know it's cumbersome and it doesn't really um uh what was that to me this sounds cool. Tim, yeah, ba oh yes, yeah, of course, banjo tuners. Yeah, I'm not, um, you know, it's it's one of those things. I'm not, not so enamoured with the guitar that I'm going to put any time into sort of giving it, um, you know, making it into a, a Gibson-looking thing. You know, it just it is what it is. I think. I mean, you know, some people might do, and it is a good, it's a good one. Um, I don't even know even if it is a through neck. It might be. I, I think the difference between a through neck and a bolt on. I don't know. I'm assuming you probably know that, Tim whether it is a correct neck or something, I don't know. Um, Richard, have you as well as that? These guitars, all these guitars sound great. Well, I only buy decent sounding guitars, Richard. It's uh, nothing to do with me. It's just that all my guitars sound fantastic. But thank you anyway. It's funny, they ne don't make any noise at all when they're just sat, um, and I'm not playing them. They don't sound, um, they all sound exactly the same when they're not plugged in and sat in a case. Um, thank you, Wally. Um, Tim was with Robin Ford Millerson. Oh yeah, what's that? Um, what key is that in? 
How's that, Gareth? <laughs> Something like that. I can't remember exactly how it goes. It's a nice tune. I thought of doing that one for one of the instrumentals. Reminds me a little bit of um, Stepping Out, basically. Yes, that's, that's the one. Close enough for me, anyway. But yeah, you're right. It's, the tone is pretty similar. Um, so yeah, it was just really the sort of thing I wanted to uh, have. Um, it, it's a bit odd to play, I've noticed. I don't play it very much, but it's it's one of those, it's obviously incredibly sort of unbalanced. So you sit there and the whole thing just falls off your lap in the same way that Gibson's fall that way, which is one of the reasons I don't play Les Pauls too often. Um, because when I play a Les Paul, it just do that. And when I play uh, this one, it wants to do that. And if I sit a, um, if I sit a Telecaster or a Strat on my lap like that, it just sits there and doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> I think that Miller Sun tone is sort of to do with having a sort of, if you like, quite a, a nice amount of gain. Not mental, but having that tone down, to be honest. So I'd say if I was going to give any sort of um, advice on how to get that sound, it's uh, the tone is down to about three or four on this. <laughs> It's, it's more the, a choice of distortion, to be honest, because I chucked like a, a serious amount of gain on. So, you know, it's uh, different. So that doesn't sound much like it, but when you stick my normal gain stuff on, which is normally quite fat and middly, and then take the tone down on the back pickup, you tend to get that Robin Ford sound pretty easily. Which, you know, just gets you there quite easily. Right, I'm going to um, play one more. This is um, one of the reasons that why I like to keep on this, because it's sort of a bit of a Clapton style guitar. So that sort of fat, what I mentioned actually, turning the tone almost off, um, get that sort of. So you get like a nice clap. Sort of woman, woman tone, I think they call it. Yeah, so that's pretty close. So, Richard, yeah, that was the story someone said to me. It was, I think he was just making an argument about why, why one of them sounded really good. I think. I can't remember now. But, yeah, it was. Uh, I was just trying to make a point that um, it's not always the guitar or just the guitar that makes something sound good. Right, I'm going to finish off with um, what we have. Oh, yeah, so I was doing a bit of cream. Let's do um, Strange Brew.
So that was the um, that is the Gibbo, the Gibbo Firebird. Um, nice guitar. Probably will never use it live at a gig. Um, might use it for a bit of recording. I'm doing some demos for um for the new album. Um, at the moment, and uh, this has got quite a nice rhythm sound, like a nice crunchy rhythm sound. There's a bunch of stuff that I could use that for, so I'll probably use it on an, on an album or two, but I can't, um, can't imagine the opportunity to play this one at a gig, because I, I tend to be quite lazy and bring one or two guitars to a gig, and this definitely wouldn't cover much of the stuff. But having said that, it's a very nice guitar, um, and it's, as I said, quite rare. There's a lot of people after these things, I notice that I say, eBay reverb tend to sort of price them around sort of like the three to four hundred pound mark. So um, there's no doubt that someone would want to buy it if I wanted to get rid of it, which I don't. Um, but yeah, and that's it. I, for some reason, I knew that Sheila was going to make a pun about Gibbon. I would actually like to put a little N on the end just so um, to make this slightly different. My, the funky Gibbon, definitely. Um, <laughs> and I'm old enough to remember the Funky Gibbon as well. Um, so anyway, um, there you go. The Firebird, not sure. I don't know much about Firebirds. I don't even know what model it's supposed to be. I think it's a Firebird 1 or something like that. Are they numbered? Someone will tell me sooner or later, I imagine. But uh, yeah, nice guitar. I'll be back, probably not tomorrow, but very likely Wednesday with another from the collection of the 42 Guitars of Doom. Um, you all take care and um, stay safe. And I will see you very soon indeed. <laughs>